Uh, we're going to get to see a lot of interesting things today um, as we look through this sixth chapter of the book of Revelation. Um, and I'm, at, I'm going to ask you to think about yourself in this chapter because we're going to, as we, we're going to see a, uh, a description. Right off the bat, we're going to see a description of, of the Lord. Uh, but it doesn't say Jesus Christ. It uses another phrase. It calls him like what? A lamb. All right. And then we're going to see these entities that are going to come forth after the seals are open. And they're going to be described, but they're going to be described in terms of, of, uh, of creatures. And then after we do that, I'm going to ask you a question about yourself. Uh, but you're going to have to use your own imagination, right? which is going to be, I think, very good, very helpful. Uh, because that helps me, and certainly I'm sure it will help you, but we can see that the entire uh, uh, Bible is written like that. And it's funny, too, because there actually was a movie that brings this out. And you say, what in the world does he talk about? Well, I'll show you in just a bit. Let's take a quick listen to Revelation chapter 6. Chapter 6. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also, and their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? All right, there we go. The great day of the wrath of the Lamb has what has come, and who shall be able to stand? Well, when we open up this this uh, this chapter, I think it's interesting to see that it, it gives us a description once again. We're very common and very used to this this description. It called Jesus a what? A lamb. It gave him the description of a lamb. There's another uh, animal that we're familiar with that Jesus is also described as. He's also described as a what? A lion. A lion. So from those aspects, Jesus is portrayed 
as a lamb, and he's described as a lamb because he was what? Our sacrifice. He was, he was uh, 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 put to death, or I should say he gave up his life for our, what? Our benefit. And he is described as a lion because he is a what? A conquering king. He is, he is mighty. And so those animals describe him. We see here that when these seals are opened, he hears from, it says, he, the first beast. Remember when we discussed, discussed the beast, the one that was, that had the, uh, one of them had a face like a, what? Like, uh, like an ox. Another one had a face like uh, an, eagle. an eagle. Another one had a face like a man. And, and, so, and so we saw these four beasts that had all these different descriptions. It didn't say they were an eagle. It didn't say that it, that it was a lion. It didn't say that it was a man. It just says it had the face up. And those, those animal pictorial descriptions give a, 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 a definition to the nature and the, uh, the function of what that beast is. Now, if you were to look at yourself and put yourself into two categories. And this is the, the little description I wanted you, I was talking about. The you that is everything that you know that, that you have been able to achieve and do with the help and the grace of God. Vision that person of you. The good that you do, the right that you do, the, the, the help that you try to give others. Uh, the recognition of knowing who Jesus is. And when you have all of that description of who you, who you are, what would you equate that to be in the animal kingdom? What, what kind of animal would you pick to be your brother? And you don't have to say what it is, but, but just imagine that. Right? Because what, what the animal does is it gives a description. Now you can say, well, somebody that said, well, you know what, I... I'm, I'm, I'm tough and I, I'm able to withstand all different kinds of situations and I can go when, you know, when things are hot and tough and when things are cool, you know. So maybe somebody might describe themselves, you know, as, as a crocodile or as an alligator, you know. Or maybe somebody says, well, you know, I'm, I'm fierce on, on people that, are, that, that do other people wrong and I come out strong, so maybe they can describe themselves as a shark. Yeah. So you could, you could, do it. Now, the reason why I'm asking you to do this is because from a reality standpoint, the Lord sees your nature. And when you're, if you were to go into heaven and God was to give you a, 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 a nature mirror and you were to look in the mirror and see who you are as an individual as it pictorially described as an animal you would see something different than what you see when you look in the mirror today if you were to look in a spiritual a true spiritual mirror to see who you really are some of those qualities would, would show forth now let me also say this I said take out the good you right now what about the you that you don't that is kind of that you don't that you don't like the, the you that kind of messes up every now and then and the you you know we all got that part of ourselves right and so when you look in the mirror what, you know what would you see there and so one of the, the the things to keep in mind is that that's the duality and the battle now you take those two animals that you may picture for yourself and now see them what battle mm -hmm. they're fighting all right they're going at each other and you have to strengthen the one that you saw the first time and, and you try to give it all the help to win the battle. See, so if you saw yourself as, you know, as a shark in one and then you see yourself as the alligator and when you look at the bad side, then you got to see, okay, I got to help the one. You see my point? And so I, 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 I throw that out there because we're going to continuously see this. These... Uh, Individuals described with um, with animal-like features, and so it's important that we grasp that, so that we don't get thrown off when we see this. And we're going to see this a lot. We're going to all the all the way at the end. We're going to see the devil's going to come out, and the devil's going to be described as a dragon. 
He's going to be described as a serpent. All right. And so why? Because that's his nature. When when if when he looks at himself in a spiritual mirror, that's what shows that type of of, of nature that makes up his his being. So we have to uh, uh, kind of make sure that we understand that and grasp that as we go through it. And it helps to make what is being revealed a little less complex as we go through the study. All right. So let's take a listen. Let's take a look. So now, once again, this is John. Uh, we saw in the fourth chapter, he was caught up to where? He was caught up to where? To heaven. Right. Um, after he saw the vision of the churches. He heard a, ver a voice that said, come up hither, and, uh, and I will uh, uh, show you things that are to come. And it says that he was also in the what? In the, in the spirit. spirit. So he's, he's looking at earthly events, not from a earthly perspective, but from what kind of perspective? Spiritual. A spiritual or a what? Heavenly perspective. And because he's in the spirit, he's seeing it from also a what? A spiritual spirit. perspective. So a spiritual and heavenly perspective. That's how he's seeing it. You have to keep that in mind. All right, so, um, and we're going to see in this chapter that there's something else that's going to open up. Uh, we'll get to that towards the end. Verse 1 says, and I, and I saw when the Lamb, and who's the Lamb? Jesus. Jesus. He's described as a Lamb because he what? Represents that animal that was totally sacrificed for the benefit of others. All right? It's like you know, when, we, when you roast a Lamb, it has to be what? Sacrifice. You know, reminds me of the old, the old uh, 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 saying: when the the the, uh, the chicken and the pig got together and said that we want to give the Mr. Farmer the best breakfast we can give him, and they said and the chicken said, "Well, why don't we just give him a bacon and egg breakfast?" And the the pig said, well, that's fine for you. For you, it's just an offering. But for me, it's a sacrifice. Amen. Because the, egg, the chicken just got to lay the egg. Mm -hmm. The pig got to die to get the bacon. Mm -hmm. All right? So the, the, the whole aspect of sacrifice is caught up in that description of Jesus being described as a what? Mm -hmm. A lamb. All right? And I'm overemphasizing that because I want to make sure that we have that going forward. And I saw when the lamb had opened the what? The first seal. Now, who was worthy to open the seal? Jesus. Only Jesus. He tried, he, 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 he tried or walked in the wine press all by himself. He delivered man by his what? By himself. God did it uh, through Jesus. All right. So he was worthy to open the seal. So when the lamb had opened the first seal, I heard as it were noise of thunder. We've heard this before. Remember when John went up to, to heaven and he saw one that sat upon the throne mm -hmm. and he spake like, like lightning and like thunder? Mm -hmm. So these words and these, these, it was like, it's not just words you hear, it's words that you what? Feel. Right? It was part of you. So I heard, and it says, as it were. So that means it wasn't exactly thunder, but it kind of resembled thunder. The noise of thunder. Uh, and one of the four beasts remember the four beasts we just talked about mm -hmm. so now one of the four beasts said and said come and see so once that seal was open he heard this noise and one of the beasts came to him and said come here John let me show you this what that opening of that first seal means verse 2 and I saw and behold a white horse now when, this, when the seal was open and he's looking in, from heaven looking where on earth and he saw a white horse and look what it says and he that sat on him had a what a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer all right this aspect once again of, of this individual coming on a white horse the white horse represents something what does this animal represent? This white horse represents kingship, rulership, leadership. Because we know that ultimately, when Jesus comes back, when we get back to, when we get to the 19th chapter, Jesus is coming on a what? On a white horse. Uh, is it, then somebody says, well, is it a literal white horse? Uh, I can't answer that. I don't know. 
But I know that it will be, it, it could be, it very well could be, a very literal white horse. But either way, the horse represents the way he's coming. He's coming as a king, as a conqueror. Well, somebody says, well, then that means that when he opened the first seal, that the white horse, that was Jesus. No, this is not Jesus. Who would come trying to look like the way Jesus would come? The Antichrist. He's coming because Jesus comes with the word of God. The word of God is represented as a what? What kind of, what kind of uh, fighting in implement? A sword. a sword. The word of God is a sword. When God speaks, it's like swords. All right? How does this king come? But this 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 uh, ruler comes. It says, "And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a what? A bow." All right. The Lord Jesus don't fight. Who shoots fiery arrows, darts? The devil. The devil fires darts and arrows. The Lord uses a sword. So this is an implement. This is a, once again. This is the antichrist. But what happens? Well, after the rapture, we saw the rapture happen in chapter 4. Then, once the, 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 uh, the church has been taken off the earth, then the Bible says that the Antichrist can't come forth until he that lets shall be taken away. And, and when it says let, that means he that's preventing. Um, I, you, know, you can't go till I let you. That's another way of saying, well, I, I, the old, old speaking, they would say, well, I'm letting you. That means I'm preventing you or giving you the permission. Either way. And so the Bible says that until the church is taken away, the Antichrist can't do what? Can't come forth. So once the church has been taken away, now the seal is open and the world's going to get what the world's been, 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 been trying to get all along. A leader that will be uh, uh, answered to all their things. They want an ecumenical we all are doing well. We all are, are right. Even everybody is right in their own mind. Yes, sir. And when you say the, the church will be taken away, and we have to let people know that they're not talking about a building. Because a lot of people get mixed up mm -hmm. with that building thing. Mm -hmm. That's not the church. That's right. It's just a place where we come and symbol ourselves. Right. He's not talking about that. He's talking about us. We are the church. Exactly. Right. The true believers. Because all the buildings are going to still be here. And a lot of church members will still be there. Yeah. They'll still be here. But the church, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, will be what? Taken, Taken away. away. All right? So, when it says here that this individual is coming, and it's coming in a white horse, he is the imitation. He is, the, he is trying to copy. Anti, when you speak of antichrist, it's two things. Yes, he's against God. That's what the anti means. But it also means in place of. See, so a, a counterfeit $20 bill is an anti $20 bill because you're giving something that is not real in the place of something that should that, that is supposed to be what? Real. real. So the world will accept. And Jesus said, I've come in my name and you rejected me. But another one will come and well, Jesus said, I come in, in my Father's name and you will reject me. But another will come in his own name and you will accept him. Mm -hmm. Alright, and so this Antichrist will enter into the world. And it says that he will have a bow. That means he has uh, an arsenal. He has weaponry. Whether he uses it or not, uh, it doesn't say. I would say that he's probably going to conquer the world through diplomatic aspects. Because he, it shows that he has a bow, but it doesn't mention his what? Arrows. Alright. And he has a crown. And the crown represents the, the aspect where individuals agree to his rulership. That's what that crown represents. It means that people will agree with what he's doing. All right? The crown was given unto him. And that's an important aspect because, see, the people of the world have to do what? Agree with what he's trying to do. All right? So he's been given a crown. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. All right? So some things... He conquered right off the bat. And the things that he didn't conquer, he set in motion to conquer those things. So not only did he conquer stuff, stuff already, he already has a rulership. But what he didn't have rulership on, he set forth his agenda to do what? To get the rulership. Because he wants the rulership of what? The entire world. All right. 
So, we see that, uh, now once again, this is looking at it from a heavenly perspective. John's looking on the earth and he sees this individual come. So, in verse 3 it says, And when he had opened the what? The second seal. And who's the, who opened the seal? Jesus did. I heard the second beast. Remember the beast, right? Said, uh, come and see. And there was uh, out, there, there went out another horse. All right, here's something else that's coming forth. That was what? Red. Red. All right? And power was given to him. That's important to keep in mind. The power wasn't something that he just had. He's not that he's stronger, but it was what? Given, given to him. Remember when Satan wanted to get to Job? Mm -hmm. And God and Satan said he couldn't get to Job. That's right. And, and uh, he said, because you got a what? Around a hedge of protection around him. And so God said, well, you know what? I will remove the hedge. You can get. So it was given to the devil. And so once again, here's a situation where power is given. Those that want rulership other than God, this is the kind of thing that will spring up. When you don't want God, then you want, you want individuals. And individuals will rulership by might, by power. By the aspect of you know, uh, I don't care whether you whether you like me or not. Um, I'm going to take and what what I want, and you're going to do what I what what I say. Mm -hmm. And when you don't, I come in and I I do battle. Now this is what this red horse represents. All right, and there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him. That set upon to take what from the earth? Peace from the earth. All right. So that means if there's no peace, that means there's what? War. War. From the earth, and that they should kill one another. What? What do you do in war? You kill one another. And there was given unto him a great what? A great sword. So now he's using what kind of words? He's using. Uh, 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 words, words that sound like the Lord's words but these are not the Lord's words see the devil did that when he would remember when Jesus was in the wilderness mm -hmm. and the devil did what he quoted scripture. the scripture to, the, to Jesus right? for it is written now imagine the devil saying for it is written cast yourself down from the from here and the angels shall bear thee up lest you dash your foot against the stone now the devil's quoting scripture mm -hmm. huh? well same thing here he's coming forth to do to do battle and if you don't listen to what he says guess what's going to happen to you you're going to be put to death mm -hmm. right? but didn't stop there mm -hmm. alright verse 5 and when he had opened the third seal Remember, Jesus opened it. Mm -hmm. I heard the third beast, third of those four beasts, say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And, when, and he that sat upon him had a pair of balances in his hand. Alright? So, those, uh, the black horse represents uh, the, uh, the aspect of death. And and just the, the, the whole, the whole uh, uh, injustice of how things operate. Mm. You're not going to do things because they're right. I'm going to do things because that's the way I said it. The scales are not balanced properly. They're totally imbalanced. You're not going to get an equal chance. You're not going to be heard properly. It's just totally out of balance. You're going to do it the way the, uh, the Antichrist and his hordes want you to do. And I heard the voice uh, in the midst of the four beasts say, now look at this, a measure of wheat for a penny. So if you want to get something to eat, it's going to cost you a what? Well, when they say a penny, back then it was talking about a, a full day's wage. So, so you work all day. See, today you work all day and you, get, you got enough money to buy your bread, you got enough money to pay your rent, got enough money to put some gas in your car, 
you got enough money to pay your electric bill and all. You got you got money, and then you got enough money to buy some clothes. You got enough money every now and then, maybe you you know go out to to ball game or, or go out to uh, you know to you know do something, you know do, do the movie or something. You got extra, no extra change. Not then, not here. You're not gonna have extra change. You gonna work all day just so you can do what? Yeah. Get in the bread line. That's it. Your whole day's wage. Just so you can get some food. You are not able to take care of your family. You're only able to take care of yourself. Sad. Look what it says. A measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. Right? And once again, that penny represented a full day's wage. And, and see thou hurt not the oil or the wine. All right, so now when you look at the oil or the wine, that represents, because what, what, what would be more the most expensive? Wheat or barley or oil or wine? Oil, oil and wine. So the, the cheap stuff is just a struggle. It's being really priced uh, out, out of proportion. But the oil and the wine is plenteous. So who has the oil and the, and the wine? What kind of people? Rich people. rich people. So what this is saying is that if you are not part of the elite rich, then you are struggling. But if you are part of the elite rich, it's not affecting you. The haves and the have-nots. That's what the world... Now, is it not turning into that already? Where is the middle class? It's just totally disappearing, isn't it? Yeah. So it's already kind of starting to shape up like that now. But it's going to be even more. It's going to be greatly intensified then. This is why we need to know the Lord. Now, this is not, you don't read this to get scared. There's no reason to be scared. Amen. You know why? Because Jesus said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. God is not going to allow you to go through this. God's going to take us, all those that know the Lord, whenever the rapture happens. And, and whenever it, it does, all of God's people is going to be what? Taken. Amen. And there are some people that say, well, God's going to let uh, the church go through the tribulation. And I totally disagree with that. Now, let's do a little quick, uh, you know, pictorial uh, understanding. We talked about how different ones are described as certain uh, uh, animals and different things. The church is described as what type of, of, of being? The church is described as a what? Bride. A bride. A bride is a what? Somebody uh, is, is the what? Wife to be. If Jesus is sending his bride through the tribulation, that means that, and, and who's opening up these seals? Jesus. Jesus. That means that Jesus is a wife beater. Because he's putting his bride in a place where he can, she can get what? Beat Smacked up. around. Mm -hmm. Show me any husband that's going to put his wife in, any good husband, any true, any true husband, Amen. is going to put his wife in an area where she's going to get beat up. Where is the rapture in the Bible, though? Uh -oh. Where does it say that in the Bible, that there's a rapture? Oh, it says it in so many places. We've read that in chapter 4. Yeah. Where it said that it told John to come up, come up hither. And it's the exact, and that's where you, and if you look in Revelation, through chapters 1 through 3, that's all you see. The church, the church, the church. The church. It's just the church, the church, the church. You hit verse 4, John, who was talking and just giving this right into the church, is told to what? Come up hither. And from that point on, you will not find the word church in the book of Revelation. Why? Because the church has been what? Taken. Taken. All right. And then you go to Thessalonians where it says, Be, uh, Behold, I show you mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be what? Changed in the twinkling of an eye. For the dead in Christ shall be changed first, and we which are alive and remain shall be what? Caught up to be with the Lord in the air. And there shall we ever be with the Lord. It's it's it's. Wait, what chapter is that? Um, I think that is. Let me let me give it to you because so I don't. My quotation skills are not all that on par. 
Let's see if we can find that. It's a good question, my dear. Let's see, is it first? Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. If you start, say, at the, if you go to the fourth chapter and you start at like the 14th verse, so that's one, one way we could actually easy to remember. First uh, Thessalonians 4 and 14. Okay. All right, come here, everyone. Let me get your Bible. Let me help you out. No, that's a good question. Let's put that there. differently? Yes, they do. Exactly. And that's why you, you kind of got to take a stand on, you know, how you want to see it. Um, and I take it like that because, and I know a lot of people teach it differently, uh, but most uh, churches, um, I'm not going to say most, but a lot of churches have this. A lot of, especially the... Uh, the um, before all the famines and the pestilences, Hmm? What says that in the Bible, before all the pestilences and everything, there's a rapture? Well, this is what it says here. Let's take a look. Let's actually, look, go back up to verse 13. Fourth chapter, verse 13. It says, but I would not have you ignorant. Now, okay, that's the first thing that Paul is saying. Right. He's saying, I don't want you ignorant. And, and ignorant means having what? To not know. To not know. Bored of understanding. Exactly. I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That means those that are what already dead. Okay. That you sorrow. And why would somebody sorrow? Because they thought they missed the coming of the Lord. Because these people had already said, well, these people died before Jesus came back. I don't want you ignorant of that. Uh, not, not even as others which have no hope. And he said, there are others. So even in Paul's day. He's saying there are other people that have a belief and their belief gives them what? No hope. Mm -hmm. So our belief absolutely gives us what? Hope. So if you believe in something that gives you no hope, you're interpreting it what? Incorrectly. Because your belief has to give you this hope. All right? 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, even so... Th uh, them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. God's going to bring with him. Mm -hmm. Alright? So that's important. They're, not, they're going with the Lord. 15. For this we say unto you by the word of God. He's going, this is absolutely by the word of God. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will not prevent them which asleep. So when the Lord comes for uh, his, 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 uh, uh, his church, it's not going to, it doesn't matter whether you are alive or dead. And 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to be with the Lord, uh, to caught up, caught up in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then it says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So once again, he's saying comfort, which is very akin to what he said, I want you to have hope. This is the scripture that, that, that depicts the action of the, the, the catching up. That this is going to happen. That the church is actually going to be raptured. Then you say, okay, well, I, I can see it definitely says the church is going to be raptured. But then you say, well, where's the scripture then that says when? How do we know it's not after the, the rapture, after the tribulation, or in the middle of the tribulation, or is it before the tribulation? I certainly believe that it's before the tribulation. Well, because of all the times where scripture says that you will be kept, where it says the church shall be kept from the hour of tribulation. Now, when we read the church, when we were in the book of Revelation and we read about the church of 
Philadelphia. And we could actually turn there. And let's see. And that is Revelation chapter 3. And we discussed how each of these churches had an aspect. Now, uh, we could go back and look at the Church of Fire Attire, where it told the Church of Fire Attire that if it didn't get its act together, it would go through the Great Tribulation. All right, and um, that's important to keep in mind because basically what it's saying is if you don't, if you, if you are part of this church, talk about the Church of Fire Attire, and you don't get your act together. Remember, he said to each of these churches some things that, that y'all needed to be focused on. That you would end up going through what? The tribulation. The tribulation. That's the first time that the tribulation uh, uh, was mentioned. But then when he came to the church of Philadelphia, and, and when you look at the chapter 3, verse 7, and he says, and the angel of the church, it says, unto the angel of the church of Philadelphia, write, these things saith he that is holy and is true. Uh, he that hath the key of David and have opened and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man opened. All right? And we talked about that as well as far as that, that, uh, that opening. Um, which I won't spend a long time to go into that. But uh, John saw, he said, I saw uh, a, 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 the, a, an opening or the heavens were opened. And then that's when he was called up. But we won't even get to that point. Verse 8, it says, I know that works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength. That means that you're not very popular. You're not very um, um, politically strong. You're not very, you know. And it says, and has, but has kept my word, and has not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do what? Do lie. Well, a lot of people that talk about, when I talk about, I am a Jew, but they are not Jews, but they do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before uh, thy feet. They will see that what you were teaching or what you were saying was absolutely right, and what they were saying was incorrect. But look, how, look what he says. And to know that I have loved thee. Who does he love? He loves his church, his bride. Because thou hast kept the words of my patience, uh, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. I will keep you from that. You won't go through that. You know, I'm going to keep that away from you. If I say, if, if I say it's going to rain and storm, but I'm going to keep you from the rain and storm, do you expect to get wet? No. So he's going to keep us from that hour of temptation. And you say, well, what does that mean? Look at the definition. Which shall come upon some of the world. Is that what it says? No. It says what? The whole world. Will come upon all of the world. To try them that dwell upon the United States or Mexico. What does it say? The earth. So that means that this hour of temptation is what? Global. Mm -hmm. But what did he say about the church of Philadelphia? I will do what? I'm going to what? Keep you from that hour of temptation that's coming upon the whole world. That is what we're going through now. What we're studying now. And he's saying, I will keep you from that. And it's important that we recognize that. And uh, in another portion of scripture, uh, let me see if I can find it here. Real quick. And I just think it's important. I'm glad she brought this question up because uh, this is some of the things that people, they, they want to know. Um, let's see if I can find this one here real quick. Uh, where Jesus, where it says that, uh, Pray that you shall escape. Uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. Uh, I can't 
can't find it. I'm looking, I'm looking. Jesus says, Pray that you shall escape. Therefore thou escape. I'm trying to remember. I'm like I said, I'm I'm not all that sometimes. Escape. I'll find it. I'll find it. Let me think one more time here. You know what? Let me put let me put the word escape and pray together in my search field. Let's see if I can find it that way. No. Give me a moment. Give me a moment. Let me look. Let me look. I'm searching. All right. Well, I'm gonna probably have to. I don't want to continue to waste time here. No, no. Just I'm, this is this is absolutely good. I'm wait, I'm not wasting time trying to answer your question. I'm wasting time trying to remember where where this scripture is. And I should I sh I wish I had. Uh, Pray that you shall escape. Uh, Pray is one of the key words. Yeah. Pray that you found my found worthy to escape. Let me try worthy. I have a feeling six, six, eighteen. Pray all the time. Pray that you may be found worthy. But it does see this one that says, uh, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? And we, you won't escape if you, if you neglect it. Ah, uh, man, where is that? I don't have it in my little small concordance. Pray that you may be found worthy to escape. Let's try. Let me move along, but um, remind me. I will have it for for you on next week. And if you don't, if you're not here next week, look, go online and you can get it. All right. Um, I, I apologize for all the dead air space here that, <laughs> that we just went through. It's I should have that kind of marked in because going through this portion of scripture, it's important uh, that we have that. And I don't know why I can't find that. That's amazing to me. But anyway, let's take let's continue on. So we're, uh, we're we're opening up these seals here, right? Mm -hmm. And um, once again, it's important to keep in mind. Uh, we're back at Revelation chapter six. It's important to keep in mind that all of this is going on where on Earth, mm -hmm. just like um, what Jesus told the Church of Philadelphia that this is this is the hour of temptation that's going to affect the what the whole Earth. All right, and it says, I beheld the black horse. We saw that, right? And we saw the beast, and we saw that they were uh, affected. Uh, it affected the ability for those that have little to be able to make a, a living day to day. If you didn't have a lot, you will be pretty much, you know, it's, we've seen some economic collapses already. We, we've heard about the Great Depression. We saw what happened in 2008. Uh, and... and what it's saying is that our economy is going to get hit even harder. The economy is going to get even a, a, a worse uh, 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 collapse than what we've seen in the past. All right. But those that have the, the, the that are represented by those that enjoy the oil and the wine, they will not be affected. Seven. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, "Come and see." And I looked 
And behold, a what? A pale horse. And the name that set upon him was death. And hell followed with him. So what you see here is a duality. This horse is both natural and spiritual. Because death happens to what side of us? Our natural man what? Dies. But then if you don't know the Lord, what comes right after death? Hell. Hell. And that's why death and hell are riding what? Side right side. together. To the point where it almost looks like they're one. Alright? And so, and uh, he says, I saw a pale horse in his, uh, and his name that sat upon him was death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part. And you can underline that. How much of a part? A fourth. That's 25%. That's one fourth. So if, you, if you're dealing with, you know, if you got a hundred, it's twenty-five. If you got a thousand, it's two hundred and fifty. If you got a million, it's two hundred and fifty thousand. You know, and so forth and so on. You could do that. So a fourth part of the earth to kill with the what? With the sword. And with what? Hunger. Alright? So they're killing with the sword, which represents the actual an actual uh, slaying of the sword. But it also has a duality of meaning. It means that it kills by wordage, by 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 statements of word. Um, you take like that woman that's been arrested in Kentucky because she won't sign. She's being arrested not because of uh, of anything or her being a bad person. She's being arrested by the words that were written by the what Supreme Court. The words that were written by the Supreme Court caused her to have to be what? Arrested. Yeah. Nothing that she did. She didn't rob or kill or hurt anybody. She didn't get in any fight. She stood her ground on something. And now because the Supreme Court wrote those words. Now the, the Supreme Court hadn't have wrote those words, you know, several weeks ago, she wouldn't be arrested. But those words caused her to be arrested. Well, people then, at this point, will be put to death because of things that people write. If you don't worship the the the, uh, the Antichrist, you will be what? Put to death. That's where that's going to be headed out to. All right. And um, and so they they also are dealing. Uh, he says, "I saw hell and follow in the fourth part of the earth uh, uh, to kill with the sword and with hunger." All right. And if I can't get to you. I will keep supplies from coming to you. Remember with the, the Antichrist aspect that no one will be able to what? Buy or sell unless he has the what? The mark of the beast. So that means that you won't be able to do what? You can't get no food. No, no food. Alright? So if I can't get to you, if you try to hide out, I will then what? Starve you out. So if I can't get to you by just killing you, I'll get to you by keeping you. And what does hunger end up doing? Kill it kills him. Same effect. If I can't kill you with the sword, I'll kill you with what? With hunger. And with death. And with the, the beasts of the earth. So then there's this, this whole aspect of other beasts. And you say, well, what kind of beasts are they? Well, once again, all of these different animal descriptions were descriptions of certain what? Entities. Certain beings. Now, say, well, what does this beast represent? I have no idea. But I do know this. It's described as a beast. And it's described as something that will uh, will also add to that killing of that one of the uh, 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 of the one fourth. Verse nine. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar souls of them that were slain for the word of God. All right. So there you go. How how were they slain? They were slain with the sword. They were slain with hunger. hunger. Uh, they were slain by this, this description that is called the beast. And so these are individuals that die during the great tribulation that are the trusting and believing in Jesus. And these individuals are not called the church. These are called the tribulation believers. These are pe people that were not the bride of Christ, but believed in Christ after the tribulation started. Right? So it, gives, it didn't say this was the church. 
It just says these were those that were slain. Remember, the church is not mentioned anymore. Because why? Because the church is now with who? With Jesus. With Jesus. All right. And were slain with the word of God. And for the testimony which they held. They were slain because of what? They were slain because of the word of God and the testimony. I will not renounce Jesus Christ. Remember the, the, the three Hebrew boys? Mm -hmm. They said, well, you know, we're not even going to think about this. You can do what you got to do. And they got thrown in the fiery furnace. Now, the Lord brought them through. But these individuals, they got brought through, but not brought through like the Hebrew boys. They got brought through and maintained their natural life. These individuals will lose their natural life, but will regain uh, spiritual eternity. Look what they said. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, will the, uh, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood? I know that you are a righteous judge. And you say, now, are they calling for, for vengeance? No, they're calling for judgment, for proper judgment. Okay. Now, you say, well, you know, but what should God do? Well, let me give you an, an, an example. If somebody comes in to, to your house and, and brutalizes your child, beats him up and, 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 and almost kills him, and then they, they arrest him, they arrest the individual, and they bring him to the court, and they, they, the guy is found guilty. And then the judge says, well, he is guilty. He brutalized your child, he broke in, he tried to rob and rape and everything like that, uh, and he, he is guilty. But because I'm the judge, I'm just going to let him go free. W what is that called? Unjust. That's unjust. That's injustice. When you are found guilty, you have to do what? You got you to do it. Now, the only way you can alleviate your guilt is to do what? Because are we all guilty? Yes. And to alleviate your guilt, you have to do what? Accept Jesus. You got to right accept now. Jesus Christ. That's the only way. Now, these individuals are calling for justice. They're saying these people have totally rejected God. They don't want the Lord. So, Lord, when are you going to come and do justice to those that do not want to accept you? And these are the individuals that, are, that, are, that died during the tribulation. Now, there is a, uh, a, a interesting aspect. It seems as though they are still in the spirit. They're in heaven, in the spirit, but have not received a spiritual body. That's what it looks like. I could be wrong, but it looks like that. And you say, why? Because it says they're under the altar. In other words, they're, under, they're not in the, in the same place where the church is. Because we saw the church represented in, in so many aspects. One of them is by the four and twenty elders. These individuals were able to move around and, and act. But look what he says about these individuals. He says, well, how long before you avenge uh, them to dwell upon the earth? In verse 11 it says, uh, uh, and white robes were given unto them, meaning that they were what? Now considered what? Pure. Were, were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest until uh, a, a rest yet a little what? Season. So here's your white robe for rest. In other words, just just Stay there for a second. And where were they? They were what? They were under the altar. All right. Um, the Jews should rest an, a, a little season until thy fellow servants, till the rest of them come. Because y'all are all going to come out and, and, and be brought forth what? Together. Until the rest of, uh, of your fellow servants. Uh, and uh, uh, also uh, that our brethren and your brethren should be killed as they were right? so until the rest of them that should be killed like you were and when this was uh, uh, done he said this should be what fulfilled so let me just read this again it says white robes were given unto every one of them and it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Alright, so that's important to keep in mind. So they are part of another grouping of those that believe in Jesus. But not described as the what? The church. Alright, separate. 
12. And I beheld, and he uh, opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a what? A great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth. All right, great earthquake. We kind of understand that. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's an earthquake going on. All right, earth is shaking, but probably, but it says it was a what kind of earthquake? Great. Great. All right, and the sun became black as sackcloth. How does that happen? Well, I can't tell you how it's going to happen, but you'll know it when you what see it because it will then be what totally revealed. What's the name of this book? Revelation. Revelation. And Revelation is revealed. So when the people that are on the earth see this, it will be a total revelation or revealing this is what's going on. Mm. All right? They're not going to misunderstand it then. So the, earth, the, the sun will become black as, as sackcloth of hair. And the moon as blood. The moon will, will have a, a, a look upon it that it looks like it's red as blood. And the stars of heaven fell upon the earth. You say, well, what does that mean? It could be meteors, maybe it's satellites in the earth. I don't know. But when it happens, the people that are, are witnessing it will have a total what? Revelation, Revelation as to what's going on. Even as the fig tree casts her untimely fig. So it was something that happened that they did not what? Expect. And when she, and when, uh, she is shaking of a mighty wind. It was something that happened and something else caused it because mm -hmm. the shaking of the wind means something that did what? Something shook it. All right. Um, let's just go ahead and finish this up. Can we do that? Another two minutes. And, that, and, and look what it says in the 14. This one is good. I think we should kind of put a little asterisk or underline this. And the heaven, and the heaven departed. It said, and the heaven not the heavens, but the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. What does that mean? It means that right now, if, if, see, if, if you see this wall here, tell me what's going on in the other room. You can't, you can't. But if I was to be able to just take this wall and Pull it back and roll it back like a scroll. What would you be able to do? Easy. You could look inside and you could see it. So it's saying here that that on Earth the heaven is going to be is going to depart and be what roll. If part of this wall departs and rolls back, you will be able to peek into what's going on in the other room, and that's what's going to happen. The people on Earth are going to somehow be able to look and see some some semblance or some understanding as to what's going on in heaven. Mm. Heaven will no longer be something that, because before it says we look through a glass what? Darkly. They're going to be able to look through with a little bit more clarity. It's disappearing. Now, when, when the heavens are, excuse me, when the heavens are rolled back and you're able to look in it, what is that going to do to you? Well, let's read what it does to the people. Look at what it says. 14. And the heavens and, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. Alright? So the heavens departed, it affected every mountain, every island. Alright? Now look at this. When the when the people were able to see that there's a real aspect of spirituality that they can now see with their natural eye, so to speak. 15. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every freedman <coughs> hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain. First thing they did is they went to go what? Hide. Hi. Because they saw something that they'd never seen before. before. I can actually see something <laughs> that, that, that's I'm looking and seeing heavenly things. What did they see? I have no idea. What was it? And how was it open, able to open up? And I, I, I can't explain that. But when it happens, you see it, you, you, it will be what? Revealed to you, this is what this is talking about. Because what's the name of this book? Revelation. It's going to be 
absolutely revealed. You will know it when you see it. All right, it will be totally revealed. And everybody on earth, from the top people, it said even to the bondmen and the freemen, everybody is trying to do what? Hide. Hide. You see, you see a big old bomb coming down on, on, on from the sky. You just gonna stand there and look at it. No. What you gonna do? Try to right. yeah, but yeah. Especially when you don't understand. But now, when you see heaven and you see heaven as something that you always disagree with or don't believe in or didn't accept, you see it not as a friendly thing, but you see it as a what? As an enemy, and that's how the world sees it. Right? They saw it, as, and so they tried to hide themselves in the dens and of the rocks. And don't think that they ain't already preparing for this. They're, they're building underground shelters and bunkers and underground cities. They, they got this already kind of uh, orchestrated as a place to go. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people, everyday people, that are building them, their underground bunkers in their own backyards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trying to you know, survive through all this. Mm -hmm. And and, and it's going to be all peeled back. So it's going to be all moved out of place. Exactly. So you're still going to see it. Unless, if God don't keep you, keep you, if, then, you, 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 then the watchman watches in vain. It don't matter what you do. All right? So, 16. And said unto the mountain and rocks, fall on us and hide us. Now, that's fall on us and kill us. Fall, fall on us and what? And hide us. Uh, uh, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. Now, what, does that mean that when that, that, that wall of heaven is pulled back, are they actually going to be able to look up and see the throne of God? I don't know. Could be. But look at what it's saying here. Hide us from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne and from the wrath of the who? Of the lamb. See, it didn't say the wrath of the lion, which you would think. It said the wrath of the what? The, the lamb. Because who's opening the seals? Jesus. The lamb. Jesus. Jesus is opening it as a redeemed Messiah. He's opening those seals. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Now you see the whole earth is, is reeling back and forth and running. Why? Because those who stood for the Lord, what happened to them? They died because they were slain, or they died because they were what? Hungry. Mm -hmm. The church, where are they? Yeah. Gone. Mm -hmm. All right. So, who's there? Right. But now, there are still though, but, but see, we still know that there are still some more people that need to be reached. Because what did the Lord tell the people that were slain? He said, rest here a little while until the rest of your brother that still need to be put to death. So they're still on earth at this time. So more people that have been able to somehow or another find some food, somehow, somehow or another the Lord provided, and they're still on earth, but they still uh, are trying to hold on. And God is going to still reveal to them. Now they may not at that point have accepted Jesus, but we're going to see in the, as we go through that Jesus is going to fulfill his commission. The, the gospel gets goes to the what to the whole world mm -hmm. because angels are now going to go through the earth because see now that the heavens are pulled back they're going to be able to what see these angels as they go mm -hmm. through the earth proclaiming the what the ever loving gospel they're going to be able to see all this stuff uh, so that that wall of separation that we have between our natural world and the spiritual world is about to, to crumble down a little bit during this time because revelation means doing what they are going to be it's going to be what revealed this is pretty deep stuff, ain't it? <laughs> but one thing I, I, I pray that, yes, I pray that I am kind of worthy. Now, now we're going to take up, we're, we're going to finish up, and I'm going to close out. And while we're straight up, i got to find that scripture for my sister here. I, gotta find, I want you to have that when you go. And then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll make sure that we even mention it again on next week. All right, let's go ahead and let's have a word of benedict. Any other comments or questions? All right. Now, I'm going to get to uh, this uh, that you call Elijah, because now he's... Uh, at prep school, mm -hmm. so he's there on his own. Mm -hmm.